Hi everyone, it's Veronica Howard. So when we're talking about developing behavioral definitions, we have to account for the fact that behavior has different measurable dimensions that will be important. So behavioral definitions have to be observable. So they have to be something that's a public event. They have to be something that uh, a third party could look at and see whether or not it was occurring. We also want to make sure it's countable. The countable is where measurable dimensions comes in. Typically when we're changing behavior, we're either stepping in because behavior is happening too often and we need to reduce it or change it, or behavior is happening not often enough. Maybe it's a, a behavior that we want to see more of, a skill we want the client to develop. So we want to increase some of the measurable dimensions of behavior. But what are those dimensions? Well, this presentation is going to really heavily feature a lot of visual content. For an accessible version of this presentation, please contact me via email. Moving forward, what I'm showing you here on screen is just a graphical representation of behavior over time. What I'm showing you with the boxes or the different rectangle shapes here is what might a behavior look like, both in terms of time indicated across the bottom or the x-axis and across maybe some other feature. Maybe this is, I don't want to spoil it, but maybe this is like the strength of it. We're looking at how does it occur? How big is it? How long is it? So when we're talking about the measurable dimensions, one of the first one that we will be talking about and one of the ones that's used most often is frequency. How often does the behavior happen? In this case, we're just looking at the number of instances of this measurable dimension. Maybe this is like uh, conversations between two people and we look at, oh, they had one instance of a conversation here, then there was a pause in the conversation, another instance of conversation here, and then a third instance, another uh, piece of conversation going on there. If we're talking about frequency, we had three instances of the behavior. This one's really straightforward and in fact is probably the most commonly uh, measured dimension of behavior in behavior analysis. Another mention or another measure of behavior we want to look at is duration. So how long is the behavior happening for? And remember along the x-axis here we have time. And what we're interested in is if this is the whole session, how long is the behavior happening for? So we have to measure when does the behavior start and when does the behavior end? And we may be measuring that for all of the responses. So we're going to say this one lasted for maybe three seconds. And this one lasted for maybe one second. And maybe this one, this third instance lasted for two seconds. So we could add those all together. We could say that this is a total of six seconds of the response. We could also compare them to one another. So we had the longest duration, then the next longest duration, then the, the, the shortest duration. Duration is another measurable dimension of behavior. We also might be interested in things like latency. Latency is the time when a response occurs relative to something else. So imagine that this is, again, we're talking about time. Imagine that a teacher gives the instruction right here that a response should occur. We're saying, hey, Johnny, it's time to go wash your hands. And we see from the point that the instruction was given, how long did it take for the behavior to happen? So it's just between one thing and another thing, how long is going on? So you can see here, this also is a measure of time, but it's time when the behavior happens relative to something else. You can also look at magnitude of the behavior. So let's imagine for a second again, this is conversation. Magnitude tells you the size of it. And maybe this is something like decibels. So we're going to, to follow how loud the conversation is. And we can see this one is is a medium length or a medium strength of conversation. This one's maybe it's a whisper, maybe it's very low. And then this one is a very outside voice. It's the biggest of the responses that occurs here. So you could also measure magnitude. We're talking about strength here uh, of the speaking measured in decibels, but we could also do something like how hard is, how hard are you hitting in Taibo? Like, are you actually giving it your all? How hard are you pulling on something? Um, how fast are you driving would be a measure of magnitude. Now this one is an advanced one. You can also look at inner response time. You could look at the gaps between responses here because that could be important too. Uh, this might be important for instance if you're a manager and you notice that the person who's supposed to be doing their job does their job and that's great, but then they'll get up for these long periods of time and then you can't find them anymore. So inner response time is just the amount of time that occurs between responses. It's, it's 
kind of a version of latency, but the stimulus is the other response or how much time was happening between. So these are just some of the very simple measures of the dimensions of behavior. These would be relevant when you're developing your behavioral definitions because you may be targeting one or more of these with your behavioral definition. If you have any questions, please let me know.